Good morning. Happy day after Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Had a great day yesterday. The kids left my door of my truck open. Of course they did. Why is that door open? Anyway, it is uh, it's Black Friday here. We don't do the whole Black Friday shopping thing because I don't go shopping. Uh, we do have some tillage to do, though. Dad is running the disc. We got a full day and a half of disc to do, so that's the one that's important to keep running. We've also got to finish up that last little field of chiseling where we got rained out the other night. So I am going to go and do that. Wouldn't it be awesome to hook that tractor up that's still here and go do it with that? Instead, we'll use this one. Ah, what a consolation prize. We had Brock go through the other day and uh, take care of the points on our chisel, so they should be in good shape to be able to finish. Uh, we do need a little bit of DEF though. We don't need a lot of DEF and I don't really like leaving that tank full over winter. It's fine. It's allowed. It's designed to be able to freeze and stuff in there, but DEF will freeze and we need to put our bulk tank away today. Um, but it's not great for it to be in there frozen, so I usually try and leave them as empty as possible. Unfortunately, we're like no bars showing, and it's we don't have enough to finish where we're at now. So we'll put some in there. Why isn't that gauge going up? Are we not pumping here, or what's going on? Well, apparently that gauge takes a while to react because I kept pumping, thinking, well, the gauge will go up at some point, and we'll just stop it when we see enough in there. And then it clicked off, so now it's full. So we get to have the EF in there all winter. Oh well, it's fine. Let's go finish our 11 acres. All right, here we go. Just this little field right here. We did the one on the other side of the lane right as we were getting rained out there the other night. It was getting real greasy and slippery as I was doing the end rows. It was raining, so we shut it down there. Uh, we had about a half inch of rain total since then, but that was three days ago. It's had some time to soak in and dry up. And while we're not as dry as we were, we're still pretty dry, and so far, we aren't very far into this, but looks like it's going to work real well. Actually, it might pull a little bit easier with a little moisture in the ground, so, but it's shattering. It's not mud balls rolling off of there. You don't get a bunch of slabby stuff. That's what we don't want. Don't see that. Looks good. We'll finish this up. Well, I suppose doing every other pass all the way across the field puts me in about half done, doesn't it? Goes quick. Know there's a big football game tomorrow? OH, go Bucks. Also, while we're on the subject, uh, today being Black Friday, um, if you need yourself some Board of Your Farms merchandise, I know it's not Black Friday anymore when you're watching this, but if you catch this on Saturday, tomorrow, when it posts, I'm pretty sure our code is still active. So head on over to farmfocus.com. You can go straight there, find Borderview Farms. You can go to my website, borderviewfarms.com. Uh, click on the shop link and it will take you right to my page on Farm Focus. Um, but if you use the code FARMLIFE, you'll get 15% off on any order from Farm Focused. Today, which is too late, or tomorrow, which is today for you guys, if you're watching this on Saturday. So check that out grab yourself something last pass on the ends here and we got this done we got all the chiseling done we're in good shape so now I say that it's all done so this is the last field that we had to rip up that is going to corn next year everything that we we're gonna plant corn now has been worked and is good for the spring that said it's conceivable that we could try and rip some uh, end rows of some of the cornfields where we have some compaction issues. I don't really see that happening because usually we only do that when we have um, wet falls where we sort of tear stuff up in the fall. And for the most part, for corn harvest this year, we did not have that. So I don't see the need to do a lot of that. Uh, and I know a lot of you have commented about taking the big big ripper in the 9RX while we had it and doing some of those ends and stuff. But here's the thing, guys. 
any of those fields that are corn stalks where the corn was bad because of compaction on the ends, they were all ripped last fall. Like, they, they were all done last fall. It's not like we've never run a ripper through them or done any of that before. So I don't think it's going to be something that one year is going to help that much. So, anyway, uh, if we are going to do any corn stalks, though, it will be with the 2730 ripper, not this chisel plow because this won't go through it. Uh, which means the D8RX is done for the year, the chisel is done for the year, and um, we'll probably do that, if we do that at all, after we get our 9R back, which I have some update on for you, and uh, we'll talk about that when we get back to the farm. All right, that will likely get parked there. We'll just leave it for now. We gotta get some other stuff cleaned up here. 512s we haven't used this year. It's for sale. Anybody want to buy a 512 disc ripper? We got an old 175 gale manure spreader over there. Needs a new floor. I would sell that. I got all kinds of stuff if anybody's needing to buy things. Just, you know, bring your checkbook. All right, so we got the tillage done there. Our dad's working on the disc. So we'll go take over from him later, but in the meantime, we've got some, uh, Christmas lights to put on and got a helper. So we've got a star up here on our big bin that overlooks to the north to the road there. And well, I, I've gotten lazy and I don't actually take the ball, uh, the light string down so they stay up here all year and just gotta get to court and plug them in, which we did. And most of them work, but we got a few burnout bulbs. We've got some broken clips. We've gotta get some zip ties and fix it up a little bit. It looks good. All right, well, it was cold up there, so I didn't film much, but we got it done. All right, um, whew, I promised you guys an update on a 9R a little bit ago. 9R, it's in the shop up at uh, our John Deere dealer in Jonesville. Those lights are not good. Let's, there. Um, Green mark. That's how that 9RX got out here because ours was up there and I asked them if I could borrow it and basically they said yes and so we took it and it's still here. They said it was leaving on Friday last week and then it was Monday and now it's still here and I don't really know what's going on with it but it's fine. It's just sitting there. So anyway, our tractor. I uh, talked to the service manager earlier in the week. We got about as good a news as you could hope for, kind of. Um, so our coolant issues is in fact the EGR cooler. Now, I knew that was a possibility, but I did not think it was an EGR cooler because we put a new one on last year. We replaced that EGR cooler a year ago, and you wouldn't think it would be bad already. Um, so, the good news is that's the much cheaper fix than a new head gasket or a new head or a new engine, potentially. So, that is a good thing. Um, even better news is that we put a new one in last year, so it's under warranty, so they're going to fix this one basically for free. We'll have some other stuff, I'm sure, but it's not going to cost us nearly what we thought it was going to. That is the good news, the really good news. Here's the bad news. Why did we have a second EGR cooler go out within a year? Uh, what's causing it? And we don't know that yet. And so um, that's a concern. Uh, in talking to him, he said that he has heard of people that just their tractors eat EGR coolers and they put one in every couple of years and that becomes a major problem. So uh, we'll see, uh, but we're going to get it fixed here. I don't anticipate it being long with the holiday this week. I'm sure they didn't get much done on it. So hopefully by the end of next week, we get our tractor back. All right, dad is going to need fuel. I'm off. Can I push it? Got it. Uh, he's he's running the disc and he's kind of a long ways from home here So he's gonna need fuel. So we're gonna haul the fuel trailer down there, and I'm actually gonna take over for him uh, That being said I'm gonna have to uh, Bring him back here and because the fields where we're going are Far enough away that we're not driving the tractor home till we're done. and We're not gonna get done with it tonight. So I'm gonna need a pickup down there Plenty of fuel in it Sweet. It was really nice leaving that just hooked up to my Chevy truck all fall. But Dad unhooked it because he's got the gooseneck hooked up to haul some tile around. So the old gooseneck. So we'll use the Dodge. The, the Ram, sorry. The Ram. Oh, yeah, there's Dad. 
He's got this front field up here done, working in the back. So there's a cluster of fields over here, 220-ish uh, acres, something like that. Kind of three different farms that are then split into smaller fields from there. Was fast. All right, I'm gonna run dad home, come back and keep working here. All right, we got our trailer unhooked, dropped dad off. I'm gonna take the pickup back over and uh, go work for a while. It's five o'clock or just about five o'clock now, so um, yeah, try and get let's see, dad's got that backfield there, probably 25 acres to go in that one. Take me an hour and then we'll go work on the next chunk there's like 75 acres between three fields see if we can get that done tonight and uh that'd be that'd be good let's go run for a few minutes before we got to turn our lights on okay um yeah disc and stalks we've got to finish this field and then over there we've got 75 acres and back across the road we've got about 80 and that's it that's all the tillage that is left for the year so uh, I'm not going to get it done tonight because uh, I'm not staying that late. We'd have no reason to because we've got tomorrow and Dad said he'd be willing to run it tomorrow so we're going to let him. But uh, we'll see if we can't knock a bunch of it out so that it's an easy day tomorrow. Alright, well we got that field done. So the next one we're going to sneak through here over to this other field. I don't know if I can make this without folding up or not. We're not super wide, 29 feet, but this isn't a real wide path. Well, so far so good. It's a spot that I wasn't sure about, but I think we're gonna make it. Cool. All right, so this is the field we're going to right now. These are the fields that were corn on corn, uh, meaning we had corn in them last year and then disc ripped it and planted it to corn again. They're also the ones, as you can see by right here, that we had major weed control issues. This was our worst field of corn by far. Now this one's only 20 acres. There's 46 over there and there's a little five acre piece over there. The 46 wasn't horrible. These two, the six and the 20 were by far our worst fields of corn. They were, they were not good. So we're gonna disc them up and get beans in here next year and hopefully do a better job with our weed control. It's uh, supposed to get real cold tonight. Like uh, 22, 23 degrees in the morning, I think I saw. I can already see that we are below freezing because there's some frost starting to set in. I don't know if you guys will be able to see the, the sparkles in front of the headlights on the ground there every now and then. But yeah, it's, it's cold out and not going to get better. So I don't think we'll get froze out tonight, but we are kind of in that territory. When it gets down into the low 20s. The ground starts to freeze on top and get hard, which if we were ripping or chiseling even, uh, an inch or two of frozen ground on the top is actually a good thing, especially when it's wet. It helps you get across the ground when you probably shouldn't be out there, but unless you get it done. With the disc, however, it can get real cold or too cold too fast. I don't think we'll have that trouble, but when it gets down into the low 20s the ground starts getting hard enough and we're not going deep enough to break through that always and get under it and stuff and so sometimes frozen ground is uh, uh when you have to shut the disc down but hopefully we can finish before that happens and i'm sure it's going to warm up again but they are calling for snow on sunday potentially a couple of inches of snow wouldn't be the end of the world but it might make things sloppy here and the tillage window while we've had a really good run here the first, well, the whole month of November at this point, it's it's starting to close. All right, we are uh, finishing up. We're actually in that small field now. I finished the one we were in before, doing that little six acre piece. And, uh, it's uh, about a quarter to eight. I'm trying to figure out how long I want to be here yet. The next field's 46 acres. It'll take me a couple of hours. I don't know if I really want to be here until 10 o'clock tonight need to be here until 10 o'clock tonight so we'll see we'll maybe do half of it or something and head for home this uh field here there's a ridge kind of right you can't really see it but 
it drops off and there's a muck pocket in this corner that we've been farming around the last few years because it's been so wet, at least in the spring. But it's dry now, so I'm trying to knock the weeds down in the grass a little bit, but I'm also trying not to get stuck because that would be a bad deal tonight. So we head into this grass very cautiously and precariously, let's say. Here's a tile stand pipe. Actually, we're not doing too bad down here. It's hard to tell where the property line is because the neighbor can't farm down to their side of it either. But we're somewhere on it. Doesn't really matter if I go over a little bit. They aren't going to care. Alright. So now, how far into this corner do we go? Somewhere right in here. It's bad. It's really bad when you can't even tell where the field boundaries are anymore. Alright. Now, the chances of us farming anything in that little corner pocket next year are pretty slim, too. But it's good to knock the weeds down and the grasses. And if you get any kind of brushy stuff or woody stem plants, you don't want it. You don't want trees growing up in there. So um, that's why when we can get across it, I try and knock those areas down. Well, we're. Are we half done? Yeah, we're over half done. I got 25 acres done, almost 26, 22 to go. So we're a little over half done here. Uh, we're kind of done with the rows behind the buildings. And so when we go back up to the other end there, we're going to do, do the ends uh, behind there's some buildings up here where this notch is. And so that's most of it. I'm going to probably quit after that. It's 9 o'clock. I guess my uh, wife and kids are home or back to the farm. They went to the zoo with a bunch of family tonight for lights and stuff. But anyway, plus it's, I haven't been outside for a while, but it's getting cold. You know how I can tell it's getting cold? Not only can I see the frost on the ground, but you see those blades back there? You see how they got dirt on the inside of them? You can see it over there too? It's frozen. The dirt's starting to freeze to the blades. That might be a problem. I don't think the ground's gonna get too hard to work, but it freezing to the blades might be a problem. Okay, well, I uh, pulled out of there. We've got 18 acres to go in that field, so not a lot. I, I know I could finish it. It would take me an hour or so, but I'm, uh, I'm gonna head home. We can finish the rest of this tomorrow, no problem, as long as it's not frozen too hard. So there's another 80 across the road. 100 acres in a day we can do that no problem take that five six hours probably so anyway uh, i'm gonna just go ahead and wrap this one up because i'm going straight home from here so thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them down below go bucks tomorrow and uh we'll see you guys on monday i'm not working over the weekend so have a great weekend see you later